Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the build of the Kinetics aircraft from ST Jets. Uh, we received this through Aeropanda and we are making some amazing progress on this build. If you are following along, last episode we got all the tail section done and we are ready to join the fuselage together. First thing we're going to do in this video is we are going to install the turbine uh, into the front part of the fuselage and that will make putting the rear part of the fuselage easier. Uh, ultimately what's most important about putting that turbine in is just getting your spacing with the amount of exhaust cone coming off the turbine sticking out of the fuselage. So let's dive into that. Okay, so the manual covers everything in the build very well, but this is exactly what we're looking at here right now. So this bell mouth on the stock pipe is 50 millimeter bell mouth. So you want to have 25 millimeters of that cone extending, or the, the turbine cone, extending past the fuselage. So really easy at this point to get everything lined up. Uh, as far as front to back distance goes with that turbine. Okay, so we've got our turbine spacing all marked. Now I would not install the turbine at this point because you have no reference whether you're centered in the pipe. Uh, I mean, something could be off a little bit where you have to shift the turbine over side to side. So um, I don't install the turbine at this point. But what I do have is my marks here, just little white paint marks on both sides. So I know uh, in and out of the front fuselage how far to have that turbine place so our spacing is good. So now we should be able to put the fuselage pieces together. Pretty simple, four big bolts and we just need to run those wires through. This is going to be pretty cool. All right, so fuselage is all joined together. Very simple process. And I've got the engine just sitting in there. And the reason for that is just checking the position of the engine in relation to the pipe. And it looks great. So that should be no problem putting that in. Now one consideration here is you've got uh, the engine mount plate, so the horizontal plate is plywood laminated with carbon and then the vertical right there that it ties into right on the end of my finger is like foam with carbon so that one hole right there we're not going to want to put a screw in there so what we're probably going to do is put one screw two screws and then maybe another one up here but we're so close to the edge of the uh, the former probably not going to bother with that so and then our fireproof material sheathing down there it goes perfectly from former to former so we'll just put a little bit of um, thick CA on that just to hold it in place all right we are moving on to the tank setup and I'll tell you why in a second uh, the fastening system for the tank is really simple so it's two 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 and a half millimeter allen keys the blue washers and stuff were already on there this captures the tank from the front section like that. Tank actually, no problem pulling that tank out without removing anything. So the tank just slides right out, no problem. That is a great setup. And we are also, the tank butts into the actual wing tube, which is perfect. So the reason we're moving on to the tank is because we have to batch glue things. I like to do this to save high sol, to save epoxy. So we need to glue our vent in on the tank. And then we also need to glue our front, uh, two doors uh, servo mount here. This gets glued onto the front gear section. So basically it's glued in that little notch right there. You can see that. So just locks into that notch and we'll glue that in place. So that's simple. So we are going with different hardware on the tank. Now the reason for that, stock hardware is good. No problems with it at all. The only downside for me because I'm running the 240 is this is a six millimeter fitting and we've got these DreamWorks fittings here. Now the, the threads and everything are the same. So these are interchangeable, which is perfect. So I'm gonna be putting the red one in this tank. And if you look at the differences here, the red one's a high flow, the silver one is a normal flow, we'll call it. So I, I feel more comfortable going with this because we have a 140, so we'll, this will accept an eight millimeter line, which will go right to our fuel pump. So I think this is gonna be a better setup. And then our vent fitting, uh, the stock vent fitting is like this one right here. And 
Same thing, it's just a normal size uh, vent fitting that comes with the kit. And we're gonna go with a high flow vent fitting just so we can run an eight millimeter line. And then our vent fitting going outside the aircraft is the standard DreamWorks high flow vent fitting. So all of the stuff on the aircraft is gonna be high flow because we're going with a 240 series turbine. Now, nice tank design. I like this tank design, flat, easy, well-made. It, uh, it looks really good. And uh, so what we need to do is just drill a hole into that spot right there. This doesn't interfere with anything. The former that this fits in sits back about here, so that is perfect. And then we'll have a nice straight shot with the vent line right out of the, the fuselage. So it'll be really, really simple. All right, so last step yesterday, we glued in the front servo here for the, the doors. That is all solid and cured. And we glued in our vent line. Now it's a little bit torn with this, about going straight and going this way. So I'm gonna put my vent in the fuselage right here and I'm gonna have this come over, do a loop and then down just to try and keep any fuel from just flooding out of the front of the tank. So those two things are done. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna get the tank all finished up. So we've gotta rinse the tank out with isopropyl alcohol. So we'll put about uh, half a liter in there, swish it around, dump it out. Another half a liter, swish it around, dump it out, and then we'll do our fuel pickup fitting. All right, so our clunk line is all done here. Tank is rinsed out with alcohol. We are good to install our clunk line. I've already installed it just to check the length, and it is absolutely perfection. So this is all a high flow system, high flow fitting, big tube, high flow end. So when I install these, I'll put a little bit of lubricant on the O-ring here, and that's all you need to install the fitting. All right, so I'm going to install the fuel vent fitting. We're gonna put it right here in this area. Reason I like that area rather than in the center of the aircraft is if I'm using a taxi tank, it's sitting right here, and it's just a nice, simple plug-in. Don't need to reach or crawl underneath the aircraft to get that vent fitting where it is. So I always like to put it here. I'm always doing my startup and stuff on this side of the aircraft as well. One of the struggles with a plane this size and this is gonna sound kind of dumb is when you've got so much room like this it actually becomes a little bit difficult to plan everything out so yesterday and today I've been just doing some planning laying things out kind of get an idea where I want to put things I mean the equipment is pretty straightforward but turbine stuff I think I'm gonna put up there I think I'm gonna put the fuel pump back here on the back section trying to make these fuel runs as short as possible I was gonna put the uh, UAT maybe on top, but decided maybe I'm gonna put it there. Might put my fuel fi fueler fitting up here. Lots of options. All right, while we're here, we're gonna install the wing wiring harnesses. Now these are already done up. Uh, aileron, flap, gear and brake. And we've got our, this is a six millimeter through fitting on here. So what we're looking at is inside the fuselage, there is a little cutout there that's gonna match up with the wing cutout. So on the fuselage side, we're just gonna do a little hole that this grommet will fit in. And all you'll see coming out of the fuselage is the ash lock connector, which is perfect. Then the excess will go inside the wing. So we'll, we'll cut out that entire space in the wing so our excess can feed inside the wing and sit in there. So for this, I just use my Align uh, reamer tool, my hole making tool, and I'll just go from the inside and the center of that, uh, that cutout and make our hole. All right, wing harnesses are installed and we've got our wiring coming to the front here. Now, I've kind of done these up and left the wiring uh, reasonably long. I kind of suspect there's, there's the cross brace that this screws into right here. So I suspect we're gonna have a through fitting on either side, um, I think. And uh, we may just have one on this back side here. Um, I haven't quite figured that out yet, but anyways, the wire is long enough to, to reach essentially anything underneath that, uh, that tray that we install, but it's all gonna be kind of oriented more towards the rear side. We also got the tank installed. Super simple to install that tank, the fitting or the, the hold down mechanism there, the piece of uh, ply carbon on the front is really nice way to do that, very simple. Um, our tank sat overnight with pressure in it and it worked out perfect. So we got no leaks in the tank, which is great. So I think, I think the next step is to install the turbine. I've been thinking about this since yesterday. I think I've got the right location for all the stuff. 
Um, yeah, we're gonna get the turbine bolted down first and that's gonna be the very first step. Now we've got our holes marked there from when we line the turbine up uh, through the rear part of the fuselage. Now those holes are more or less for position forwards and backwards right now. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna get the turbine set back in here, get it nice and centered in the pipe. Uh, we know our distance front to back. We're just gonna get it centered this way, make sure we're happy with those locations. We'll mark them again in a different color like yellow. And then what we'll do is we'll take that turbine out and we'll just drill small holes. Now stuff like this, I'm a huge fan of just using wood screws. They work really well. I can put CA on them. They're never gonna come out. We've got nice thick engine rails there and it's gonna be a nice, easy solution to bolting down the turbine. So let's get that done. And engine is installed, screwed in place, all works good. Now I forgot to mention that I added a little bit of BVM uh, ceramic heat shield paint just around where the bell mouth is because you have a layer of the foam Airx carbon material exposed to the pipe. So we uh, put a little bit of, of the ceramic paint on that and then did another uh, coating over top of the front section here. Uh, probably not necessary as this doesn't really ever get hot, but I figured we'll just do it anyways. We are going to work on the turbine accessories. Now that would be the ECU and the fuel pump. Now I was torn as to where to install these and uh, I thought about maybe underneath the tray here, like underneath the tray. Um, didn't really like that because I was gonna put the ECU up here, which means we'd have to run the, uh, the big wire up there. So what I finally decided on was we are going to put the fuel pump down here, which means that our fuel pump line just comes up and plugs in to the ECU, nice and simple. And we're just gonna mount the fuel pump to this former right here with some nuts and bolts. Now I'm not gonna mount any batteries yet or plan for any battery locations. Initially in my mind, I think we're gonna have the receiver batteries at the front of the tray and the turbine battery down here in front of the fuel tank. So if that actually happens, then we'll have nice easy access to the turbine battery right there. We'll just glue a tray in and we can use the stock cable and just run it down so the plug is exposed. So nice and simple. And then we'll have some of our XT60 connectors mounted to the board. We're not going to uh, commit to any battery locations at this point because we're gonna get everything installed and we will place the batteries based on the CG location. Now, the way I like to do a plane like this is I like to have the CG a little bit back and then add some weights in the nose to get the proper location. Reason for that is generally the stock CG locations are very conservative or sort of conservative and you wanna be able to move that CG location back. But if we do the CG perfect with the batteries placed in the perfect spot, according to the stock uh, location and we want to change it, that means we have to add weight to the tail of the aircraft, which is not ideal. In this situation, we want to try and keep it as light as possible. So that's why we're doing uh, the way I suggested. I'd like to have maybe a strip of weights in the nose or somewhere like that, something close to that so we have that adjustment uh, possible. All right, so we got our ECU mounted and our pump mounted, our fuel pump. For that, I ended up using uh, some blind nuts, just uh, 256 blind nuts and obviously small bolts, and that worked out good. Uh, you have to be careful when you're screwing stuff into these, uh, these I guess, Eryx or foam uh, ribs. They are very structurally stiff like I showed you with the support that goes over here for the cockpit. I mean, this stuff is really, really rigid, but uh, <clears throat> not great for screwing stuff into. So um, something light like the fuel pump, totally fine. It's supported well with those blind nuts. The screws that go in for the ECU, I mean, the ECU weighs nothing. We used a little bit of CA in there to, uh, to lock everything in place. So that's good. Before I put the fuel pump in, I made sure I attached my four millimeter Festo line. Uh, main reason for that is because um, you don't really have great access underneath here. Other thing I did with the, uh, 
the Swewin pumps, they, they're two leads that come to a, a Y fitting. I made sure that the Y fittings were rubbing against the underside of this plate, not the tubing. So as this vibrates and moves and stuff, there is no tubing that's, that's touching this carbon surface. So just something to be aware of for longevity. And that is kind of the engine install, super easy, lots of room. So we've got one cable here that goes from the engine, uh, engine port on the ECU to the engine. We've got a LiPo cable, which we're gonna leave off for now because we don't know where it's gonna go. And then we've got our telemetry and PPM output. Those need to run to the board here. So we're gonna run those next and I'm gonna encapsulate those in snakeskin to this point right there and then coming through. And then all of these wires, we're gonna have a piece of snakeskin hiding them until they get underneath the board. So that's all gonna look nice and neat and bundled together and be nice and clean. All right, so we've got our gear here, but we don't have our legs. So we're waiting on our, our struts or legs for the uh, kinetics. So we've got the front gear here set up and uh, pretty straightforward setup. We've got a JR8911 servo. This is just a, actually this servo came out of the bull is where it came from. So that is, uh, we're reusing that. And uh, we've set it up with an Align servo arm. The kit calls for a 20 millimeter arm, which we've got here and we're all set up. So that is good to go. Um, the reason I got this set up like this is I don't think I'm gonna install it yet because I wanna have that leg here to make sure we get everything centered, but uh, we wanna run the cable so we're prepare, prepared and ready to go for when that leg shows up. Now the front of the kit here has some great spots for uh, already figured out here. And this is kind of ingenious little, little things. So there's two little slots here that fit a uh, servo keeper just perfectly. So those will be for one for the steering, one for this door servo. And then we've got our other two devices in the front end. So that is the front door servo. You can see the cable right there. And then we'll also have the gear line or the gear actuation power line, uh, which will come to that front end as well. So we'll have those two pieces run in snakeskin coming through that hole right there. We'll have these two guys that plug in to here, but our extensions that are hanging out the bottom right now, they'll also come through right here through a piece of snakeskin. We'll make sure we mark these, uh, these plugs as well too for which one is which, and then also marking our, our negatives on there or a positive so we know which way to plug in. And once we get this all set up, we'll probably just put a little bit of CA to hold those in place and uh, super clean. All right, guys, we are gonna switch our focus to the wings of the aircraft and just move away from working on the fuselage. We're gonna save the fuselage stuff for the last video, which is probably gonna be the next video. So we're gonna wrap up the wings as the last step of this episode. So we don't have the gear yet still, but uh, what we're gonna do on this episode is we are gonna get our aileron servos done, our flap servos done. Okay, so first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make our opening for all of our wires to come out of. That's the messiest job here, so we'll get that out of the way. And the path for our wires, at least for the gear, we've got a hole right there. There's a hole underneath the wing tube, which is right here. And that's gonna have a, probably a straight path coming out to this location. Uh, the aileron probably is coming underneath by the gear right here. And then once it comes to the gear area, it's gonna follow the same path. Now, the nice thing with this being ER40s is you've got a ton of depth there. So there's gonna be a lot of room underneath that gear, no space issues at all. And our flap servo is right on this former right here. So again, that path for the flap is gonna come like that, follow the same path. So fairly straightforward on this uh, this wing. So first thing we'll do is we'll just take our Dremel. Uh, there's gonna be a, an oval shaped cutout here. We're gonna use our, our car carbide bit, our skinny carbide bit. And we're just gonna cut out that space where, uh, where the opening is in the woodwork. <laughs> All 
right, I'll give you a shot inside here. You can see there's a nice straight shot right to the opening that I was telling you underneath the wing tube. So that is simple and easy. And this is where our ash lock connector is gonna hide. So you can see why we did it this way. So when we put the wings on, this is gonna sit inside the wing. So just pulling off the aileron covers and we have some very, very long screws holding these covers in. The cover is also where the servo mounts to. So that uh, is important that it's nice and strong. So we got a nice cover. It's all fiberglass, nice and solid, which is perfect. All right, so working on ailerons here, we, uh, we've got a couple things going on. So we've got our hatch, obviously. Uh, you've got the uh, servo insert, I guess, is what you might call it. Now, this came as one piece. So this is exactly the same size as the hatch. This piece here is inset, and this is what sits on there and our servo sits inside that. So there's a couple considerations here. Uh, number one is the MKS servo arms, these ones that I was planning on using, uh, they're not gonna be ideal and the reason for that is this little build out piece sits right there and kind of rubs on the, on the opening. We could increase the size of the openings, but I don't think I'm gonna do that. I think what I'm gonna do is use one of the Hangar 9 ones. Now this is the exact same servo arm that I used on the rudder here, just to get the proper spacing and everything. So uh, it's gonna be the same setup as this. So this is gonna probably be the best option and uh, that's totally okay. So uh, the other thing is the MKS servo arm, we need to be at the one inch mark, so we'd have to cut that one, which is fine, not a big deal, but the, uh, the Hangar 9 servo arm here, it's uh, one inch on the very end hole, which is perfect, that's what the manual recommends. So first thing we need to do here is check if the servo actually fits in this little holder, which it does not. We need to increase the size a little bit, it's mainly on the base side here. You can see that it uh, does not fit in there. So all we need to do is open this up a little bit and get that servo sitting nicely in this little holder. Okay, so the process here is fairly straightforward. Step number one, fit the servo into the holder, which we've already done. We've cut the back piece off just because there would be almost nothing left. The point of this holder is to keep the servo from shifting. Uh, your actual structure is the rods that are gonna come through and the plate that's gonna hold the servo down. Uh, for the Hangar 9 arm, had to make a little bit of a, uh, an indent right there. We've glued the, uh, the plate in place with medium CA and I'm just gonna uh, sand out with the Dremel those pieces of wood that are showing just to get rid of that. Okay, so using our wood template as a guide, we've drilled our two holes through the other side and we're now going to take our fasteners, which are these guys right here, and they're gonna go from the outside and up and these are our actual plates that hold the servo in place. Okay, so here's our final setup with our ailerons. We've got the servo arm installed, all Loctited down, fits great. And then the bolts, plate, nuts, washers, all that is installed. As a final step here, I just put a little bit of CA over top of the nuts and the washers and everything just to make sure that they don't back out. Yes, these are lock nuts, but um, just one more step just to make sure. You don't wanna over tighten this whole setup as well too. If you start over tightening it, it's just gonna bend the plate and deform it. So that is good to go. We can paint those white afterwards, but that is a perfect setup. Really like it, nice and simple, nice and accurate. And it's gonna sit in, and it's gonna sit in there just like, oh, I got it backwards that. Okay, so same process with the aileron setup. We've got the radio turned on. We've got a temporary extension attached to the aileron servo, and that is plugged into our central box in the appropriate port for the right aileron. So right now our servo is plugged in and powered. We've got our ball joint installed. We've got our rod and ball joint permanently installed on the aileron surface. 
and we've got the aileron taped to the center position. So what this does is, number one, it allows us to see if the rod's actually gonna fit, which we may have to take just a little bit of that rod off, but we do ha we have the opportunity to thread it more inside there. But this ultimately allows us to put our carbon on there and get it marked to exactly where we need to cut it, just like when we were doing the other surfaces. All right, so our aileron's all set up. We've got uh, our, our linkage all done. The rod's been high sold to the carbon and we are set. So everything's centered right now. We've got the, the recommended amount of travel, which is measured at the tip. So 14 millimeters up and down. Here's a shot of what it looks like. And play-wise, zero play in this setup. Okay, so we're ready to run the extension for the servo. Now, this is some normal stuff for me, but uh, I always suggest to people to not use the servo lead as part of your extension. Uh, reason for that is if you ever have to swap a servo out, uh, it makes it very difficult because often you can't back feed the servo line. back into the servo area. So if you have the servo installed in this area, you have the line coming to here, the extension coming to the root of the wing, what happens is you have to try and pull that back through to unconnect the servo, you don't have that ability. So what we'll do is zip tie the servo up and now we'll make our extension. And then I always use a little section of heat shrink and this goes over top of the connection which uh, helps hold everything together. Time to start working on flaps. Now, a couple of the important things, again, all covered in the manual. Your spacing on the servo horn needs to be 20 millimeters. Now, the manual shows a great shot here of the flap system. So, like normal, this would be flaps up or zero flaps. And our full flaps, we want that linkage to be completely straight. So, we want our servo arm linkage to be completely straight in line to take all the force through that servo shaft rather than the servo motor. So the kinetics, really simple to measure flap here. We've got 100 millimeters for landing flaps and that's measured at the wing root. So really easy with this setup because we have the wing uh, root there which is solid, the flap is cut in and really simple to get our 100 millimeter measurement. Now, if this wasn't here, I would measure 100 millimeters, put my angle finder on there, and we would do that. But in this case, because we've got the measurement here, 100 millimeters, we are just going to use the measurement system. Okay, so the flap arms that we're gonna use is the hubs from MKS. These are the six millimeter hubs, not the eight millimeter ones. And so we're using the hubs and we're using the carbon horns. Now, the aluminum horns would actually be perfect. So here's an example of the aluminum horn. This outside hole is actually 20 millimeters, I believe, and that would be ideal. But uh, we don't have a second one of these, so we're gonna use the carbon ones. And that actually works out fine because we need to drill this hole bigger to allow the larger ball joint hardware to fit through. So this is the right wing that we have in place. This is the right wing flap servo. So when this is installed and we're at full flaps, this is exactly how we're going to have our servo set up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug these servos in. We're gonna get our geometry and everything set up uh, beforehand. And we need to do our uh, hardware mounting and everything beforehand as well. So let's work on that. Okay, so our hubs are mounted onto the servos. The servo arms are not, they're just loosely set on there. This gives you an idea of what we're looking at. So this is our right flap servo, left flap servo, and this would be full flap position, half flaps. Uh, half flaps and flaps off is just a guess at this point. So I just put arbitrary numbers in there just to get some movement. And there we go, that's gonna be way too much, but that gives us a perspective of what we're after. So now what we'll do is we'll pull these servo arms off, drill out our 20 millimeter hole, shorten these servo arms up. All right, so working on flap servo installation all the way down there in the wing. Now these are a little bit difficult to get at because they're sitting right in this location right here. So you got good access with your hands right there, but quite difficult to actually screw in. So we have a special tool for that. So I just use my hand uh, nut driver here, quarter inch driver, 
Uh, we've got our long extension on it, our bit receptacle, our bit, and our nice big pan head servo screws. So this makes it really easy to get those screwed in. So uh, just this is how we're fastening the servo. So first thing I'm doing is just temporarily putting the servo in. So we're just putting it in with two screws and then we'll work on our linkage. I initially think that these linkages are way too long. So we're gonna have to shorten this down a lot. So we'll uh, get the servo installed and then work on our geometry. Okay, so there's a shot of the inside of the linkage and you can see the, that is the flap up or off or zero flap setting. And then what I'll do is I'll move it to the full flap setting. So there's the full flap setting. You can see that everything is nice and straight. That's just manually put in place. Uh, it's not plugged into the receiver yet. So we still have some adjustment there. And our travel here is as is instructed, 100 millimeters. So that all worked out good. Fairly difficult to actually get in there. So we still have to put all of our 1.5 millimeter fasteners into that servo arm, but uh, you at least you have a decent wheel well size to get in there. And then our linkage connection here on the surface side, you can see there the ball joint nice and captured. I did have to open up the opening just a little bit right there uh, in this spot right here where my finger is, just so we could get uh, that ball joint to sink all the way in but uh, not a big deal. This is the, the foam carbon Eric stuff, so easy to, to grind out. So now we just need to finish uh, fastening down that servo and the servo arm and the right wing is complete. All right guys, and that is it for video number two in the Kinetics build series. We are making some amazing progress on this aircraft. Honestly, very easy to put this thing together. The front nose door and maybe the flaps have been the most challenging. It is a big aircraft. Obviously it's a little deceiving because I'm kneeling. Maybe that's a better perspective, but still a great size aircraft. So we're gonna finish this airplane up in the next video. So only three build videos for this aircraft. Very easy to put together. Uh, we are waiting on our gear, or actually our gear legs, which are en route from Electron. And once those arrive, we will install them in the wings, get the wiring done there. We've got the front end to finish putting the electronics in, and we've got to do our test runs on the turbine and final setup. So final video coming up soon, and we will be maidening this aircraft very soon after we are done the build. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.